Hi everyone, we are back and uh, we are just about to get into game one of the grand finals and uh, after casting that amazing uh, bronze match between um, Brozras, Artivik, Lovness and DevM, we now step into another best of five. This time the stakes are significantly higher. First place is, uh, fl place is going to be $1,000 uh, to split between the two players and second place is going to be 600 So uh, big difference in terms of the... Uh, the, the split of the prize pool there. Got a couple of seconds before this match begins. Um, but Momo, uh, how are you feeling about this finals? Good. I mean, it's always nice to see fresh meat in the finals of a of a jam packed tournament. We have we had a lot of heavy hitters in this lineup, not only through the qualifiers but through our final uh, eight teams. It was right. So when seeing a, a fresh team. In the finals is very um, appealing to me because we don't have the same old uh, Scotch Nagano versus Isildur, Von Aston, whatever finals we see like nine times yeah. out of ten. And best of all, as we alluded to earlier, is that Creating Name and Seeking actually 2 0 Nagano and Scotch in the qualifiers two weeks ago. So this is going to build some kind of tension between them, I hope, that um, on one end, Nagano and Scotch want to redeem themselves in front of everyone and reaffirm their dominance in the 2v2 scene. And at the same time, on the other end, Creative Name and Seeking want to prove that it wasn't a fluke and that they are the best team right now. Absolutely. So this well, final is, yeah, this finals is going to be great. Yep. Well, let's see how it plays out. Let's get into game one. Hello everybody and welcome to our first game in this series, the Grand Finals of the Ultimate Team Tournament 2. And after playing through the qualification rounds and making their way steadily through the quarterfinals and semis, we have two fantastic teams to play our series today. On the north side of Crossing in the Woods, playing as the Brits, it is Nagano and his teammate to make up Gold Path 2, playing as the Soviets, is Scotch. And in the south spawn of Crossing, we have our mixed access team, Creative Name and Seeking Guy. They are both well, well, um, dang, I had a little brain fart there, but they're long time teammates of each other. They have been playing this game for a very long time. And here they are in the finals, ready to take on the historically strongest 2v2 team in this game's history. Yeah, if you've ever watched a 2v2 uh, tournament before, you'll be familiar with the name Gold Path 2. That is Scotch and Nagano's uh, team name. And uh, they have just been number one place at the end of uh, pretty much every 2v2 event. We were struggling to think earlier of an event where they haven't uh, been first place. And uh, that is a pretty threatening title to play against. Uh, that being said though, Creative Name and Seeking Guy have really brought something fresh to this event. They have played uh, against uh, Nagano and Scotch earlier, you know, on in, in the qualification rounds. In fact, the finals of one was a, a series between these two and Creative Name and Seeking Guy actually, um, you know, they're actually 2-0 uh, in a best of three there. So they're really mm -hmm. showing that uh, they absolutely have what it takes to take down the best 2v2 team this game has ever seen. And this is going to be an exciting series. Absolutely. And I'm actually, for once, going to say I'm glad to see it's crossing in the woods. Little refresher on the map. And it wouldn't be crossing the woods without an austere sniper. Seeking guy went for the austere sniper right after his gren. And let's see, it has not taken its first shot yet not quite revealed itself oh momo right at the start of this game nagano with the beautiful flank with the tommies has taken down the stern pioneers from creative name wow. and uh hey it's a big win at the start of the game it's not deciding but uh taking down a squad like that right at the start it's uh, a really good start to the series and uh absolutely gold path luckily two. for okw they don't need that engineer to build any uh tech structures like uh, Pyos would. 
So, just need to get that back and have sweepers online, especially against Soviets, which he is doing. He's immediately rebuilding that. Uh, sniper now pushing up with the cover of these grenadiers. And Pyle's also scouting for it. Going to try to take this uh, fuel. Uh, Seeking did a great job of cutting off this fuel. This section was parked in that fuel house for quite a while and finally forced it to move out to reconnect the territories. Good solid company heroes play there. Actually surprised actually the uh, creative name and Seeking guy are playing together on the right hand side. The sniper initially opened up on the conscripts. So just think actually you've got to get rid of that flamethrower as quick as possible. Access now to get across the river whilst the conscripts are building sandbags. You don't want to let them get that green cover position up. Uh, all the while you see Seeking Guy, he's got some pioneers there just to try and gun down any units that are on the retreat path. And uh, Axis, you know, whilst they maybe haven't had the fuel at the start of the game, they're potentially able to muscle up on the right hand side and they could take double fuel here after connecting it left and right, which would be a great lead for them. Yeah, last thing you want is access to, uh, from the allied perspective, especially on crossing, being such an access uh, oriented map. Um, last thing you want is them to have early double fuel. It's accelerating that late game that they're so strong at on this map. And um, Nagano did lock in Royal Artillery early on. He just got that out of the way, but Carrier Name and Seeking have um, quite a lot of options at their disposal. Seeking actually has elite troops on there, on top of the elephant, which I, we would expect on a map like Crossing in the Woods. And Creative Name has just locked in Overwatch. Got their uh, skill strafe ready for the late game. I think Overwatch could be really uh, punishing if you want to hide Goliaths on your side of the river. Uh, there's always some line of sight blockers when you're actually trying to move across the, the road in the center. Uh, this is a strong push from Nagano here. Actually going to be met with an MG42. Going to suppress the squad. Sniper really getting to work. Eight kills already. It's a strong early game for the Sniper. Exactly what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we usually see on these high level games, whether it's 1v1 or 2v2, is that you really need another Sniper to kill, kill a, a Sniper. It's just the most effective way of doing it. Because um, there's so many ways to counter um light vehicles and and infantry blobs as we just saw there it wasn't quite a blob but the mg did quite a great job at shutting down that cutoff push and the sniper just bled them away so i'm really curious to see how long it'll take gold path to realize that or if they'll just double down on like artillery and hoping to pick it up later because austria sniper is already nearly vet one on, a, on this kind of map, it does such a great job of shutting down like an entire sector. Especially against Tommies. Who have now got the five man upgrade. Good job for them to bolster squads as soon as they can. And uh, we haven't seen a universal carrier on AEC, so it shouldn't hurt teching too much. Um, scout car in for Seeking Guy. A good option. They're about to find out if conscripts have AT grenades, and it's a good guess. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, they don't. Make the retreat there from the conscripts. Scout car has a good opportunity to get some shots off on the negative cover from the river, but doesn't. And the map has really started to uh, take its positions. With, uh, before it was a bit patchy. Axis trying Ooh. to respond to what happened at the start of the game. I mean, they, they're just really, really working together to uh, push push allies back from the right hand side but they've just left the left completely unguarded did you see what just happened there yeah. um as soon as those shock troopers got revealed seeking locked in elephant because he knew that was the only shock troop doctrine that scotch had so he knew there's going to be an is2 somewhere in the future and he insta locked in the hard counter to it elephant so. on crossing the woods if we get to that point is going to be insane Oh, there's a mine there for oh. that scout car. I think it's going to be pretty easy repaired by the uh, by the Stern pioneers. Uh, they do have the support package. So they will have uh, slightly quicker repairs. But you need to be careful because Soviets are moving across the river. Shock troops. Nice really shock push. Ready for action. 
hoping we might see a ground attack there with the six pounder AT gun, but uh, not to be. Sappers here, they managed to find a really good flanking line around the arc of the MG42. That's going to force the retreat of that unit. Sniper uh, is now on its own. And the sniper, I think, has got to be uh, a little bit fearful of perhaps a British sniper at some point. It's not unheard of for Nagano to bring those out. Or Puma. 2-2-2 two, two, two did a good job of, uh, I should say Seeking did a good job of using that road to speed up a bit and use that shot blocker and get away with that because it's going to be worth its weight in gold when that thing gets vetted up with scopes. going <laughs> to just provide such a huge advantage to them for their packs, mortars, artillery, whatever. Pretty much everything. Oscar Sniper up to 20 kills in 9 minutes, almost blue. That's Still a no really sign of counter sniper. To get 20 kills like before the 10 minute mark. I mean, it, normally like a really good sniper play will will double, you know, you know, double kills per minute. But to have it at this stage of the game is a lot of uh, manpower lost for the oh, allies. Yeah. Uh, it's course, already now, paid itself. Exactly, yeah. And he's got the incendiary shot, so he's actually able to stun some of the infantry coming in. It's really good at helping out in some engagements. But uh, having said, I mean, allies, it looks like allies have had more map control in this game. But if you actually look at the VPs, Creative Name and Seeking Guy um, have got a lot more VPs left. They're calling in recon at the moment. I assume just have a little look at what's in the uh, enemy base. And just have a quick see on what, on what they're seeing. It's, it, it works both ways in the sense you're spotting the actual units, but the recon plane will actually detect any snipers. So he's taking a precautionary measure to make sure there isn't a Soviet or British sniper hiding uh, in the woods, ready to counter snipe. So good precautionary use there of the reconnaissance over the flight. It's a little bit heated on the right hand side of the map there. It's, uh... Scotch was really just trying to... I think he's trying to take down the Puma. He's managed to get sight here with the shock troops and the conscript squad. The six-pounder from Nagano uh, a bit far back on the river. And the scout car is just coming to help a little bit. Actually, this is a really, really bad situation for uh, Axis right now. The Allies have actually just pincered them. I don't think we had any squad wipes there though, I think that, that's the important thing. It doesn't matter if you lose all the territory because you're close to your base, you can reinforce and heal, get back on the field quickly. Um, so this can all change round. This 2 2 2 just bullying the Tommies, no snares to stop them. Stern piles on the roof, but then snipers moving up to support. Should be an easy recapture for, for seeking here. Uh, six pounders actually rotating over to try to counter this along with the T70. Puma's finally repaired up after getting a snare. Gonna look for some targets. Once a T70 reveals itself, I'm assuming it's gonna head right over. As soon as they built the green cover sandbag, just destroyed by the Puma. It's uh, actually like it, hard work. I think it's sometimes underrated, you know, like how good the Puma is or the T70 at taking down green cover positions because you can attack move those. They're hyper accurate and they'll normally bring you know green cover down about three shots. So it's actually a really good utility vehicle as well as being great against light vehicles. Is that a centaur? No, a Cromwell in production for uh, Nagano. Pretty respectable time, 12 minutes, not bad. Very good time for Cromwell. We go Raketan in production for creative. Seeking does, let's see, does he have battle phase two up? He does not, but he does have a pack now. Just fresh off the spawn. How ballsy the scout car is here. I'm not even sure what oh. that was about. Diving in there. Of course, there is a mine and a T70. Why oh, is the Puma going? Doing? Oh, he's going to get killed here with the tag ground. Uh, they're lucky to get away with that. that was, uh, I'm not really sure what happened there. Not sure that what was trying bad. To play. What is he doing? He needs to back up. He's sticking around way too long. 
Actually, firing at the oh, crumble is not good because it may be able to counter fire. I don't think they can make anything for this. They're going to get another shot at the pack 40, but it misses. Now, uh, Nagano here, if he actually pushes far enough, he's got coordinated barrels from his commander. He could lock the Axis in their base from this side. What a shame to lose that scout car, though, because we're looking at uh, Jaeger armor. We're looking at the late game elephant, and that scout car is like essential, really. I think at one point he'll have to rebuild it when he gets a chance. It's just way too valuable. It's just very unfortunate to lose a veterancy for no reason. I don't know what the strategy was there. I mean, the gist of it was they were just trying to bum rush the T70 because the Puma was right behind it in a little Congo line. But there was a mine there, this gun, and then the Cromo popped up. So yeah. shut that down really quick. And they're really lucky not to use, lose the Puma there. I mean, I know that they actually beat Nagano and Scotch 2-0 in the uh, qualification rounds, but I mean, there's such a lack of respect not to go over with Minesweepers, you know, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> you know, as if they thought they could get away with that, really? You want to get the best 2v2 team on paper, and you just want to <laughs> charge in with light vehicles? It's cocky. Yeah. yeah, especially with it being like a road right there, you can bet your ass there's a mine or two over there, like, there's no way there isn't a mine. There we go. I uh, don't know whose mind just got blown up there in the middle, but Puma gets a good hit on the on the Cromwell with the pack. Pack and support. Six pounder spotted. He knows he doesn't need to pop up there. Nice hit from the pack. Brings down the Cromwell to half. Still not paying attention. He's eating another pack hit. What is Nagano doing here? There is a, a lot going dude. on at the moment because there's a lot of infantry engagements going on all around the map. You know, the Scotch is actually trying to flank. Um, you know, we see that Royal Artillery has been using early warning for the flares, so flares are actually going off nice. uh, all over the map right now. Uh, Nagano has pulled down Jaeger squad. Coordinated barrage. And that's going to be nice shock immediate. Trip. Yeah. Great smoke from the Puma though to come in and defend the retreating of all those units. It looks like they'll be rewarded with getting all those units safely back. And uh, actually the British artillery has got to be careful of some friendly fire. <laughs> Seeking has been absolutely dominating the left side. Just now rotating over to help with that push. Sniper near... Look at the sniper, 28 kills now. Um, not as effective, I think, as it was earlier, but still yeah. insane. Still he's been insane. a bit more cautious with it. He's he's really, really um, scared of the counter snipe. So he's picking his shots, and there goes another recon flight to scan the area and make sure he's not about to get bamboozled. Double pack, retreating there to the MG42. A little safety net there. Oh, he didn't get the shots off because they were the trying to reload their uh, magazine. Seeing the uh, Stuka in build now from Creative Name. Nice. So, uh, actually, next time you see that recon, I mean the recon as well is a bit of a, a bit of a bluff for the opponents because you call recon. I think you know Scotch and Nagano are going to be expecting that uh, the Stuka is on the field at some point, so it may actually be forcing them to shuffle around their support weapons. Yep. Uh, Exactly. Just like flares, the recon, you, at this point in the game, you expect some kind of artillery to come down once they begin scouting, uh, which really goes to show how much you need anti-air when you're dealing with spotter planes rather than flares. You need to stop not only those, uh, oh, I don't know what Seeking was thinking there. He could have got squished <laughs> if, if the Chroma was ready for that. <laughs> Insta retreated. Double flamethrower uh, cooking up these bolts in the middle, making some short work of them. But back to that point, um, you need to get a centaur or a quad out ASAP. Not only for those... Uh... Oh, shit, I keep getting interrupted. Double pack shots here might take out the T-70. Oh, they took a guest shot, but he's uh, ambitious. Very oh, ambitious. ambitious. And the Puma eat the snare with two cons there available. Good thing, good thing for uh, creative name is that Scott actually didn't have the munitions to do another follow-up strike. 
Nice little retreat path. But yeah, basically my point is you need to kill the planes. <laughs> Are you able to boost your mic just a little bit, by the way? Um, yeah. that more mines actually oh there's a shoe mine uh that we saw earlier from a creative name uh what's on the field here katusha on the right hand side um given the way that uh axis have been playing their support weapons which are pretty much i'm sure they're hot keyed together uh by the looks of it katusha could be deadly has the stuka got to shoot yet no but yeah, Katusha's out as well. Let's see. No sniper yet. I think they're just gonna go the artillery route and pray to what? pray to Jesus that they go the sniper. These double packs actually on the uh, combat. Uh, nice I just wanna see one on the pack guns as well. Like, uh, Let's just watch this the first. So. Yep. Maybe he's going for the retreat path here. Ooh, looks like that was a cave. Almost gets the Tommies. Shock's moving into mid with the T70. Maxim and Zip need to support any Puma or infantry blobs. Katusha coming in, I'm assuming, on this munition point here. Yeah. Ooh, a little bit too short. Moving kind of back into it. <laughs> There's actually something that uh, we've always noticed with uh, Gold Path 2, and you actually see it with with uh, some of the players. They are, they're always using the Katusha at like the maximum range, and I think it's for safety. But obviously, the spread of the rockets becomes uh, you know a lot larger. You maybe like kill a lot less. Um, but one thing it is good for is for just creating all these medium cover. Uh, yeah, and also map. stopping. You see that Puma just poked up a little bit to see if he could kill the Katusha. It also prevents stuff like that if you fall asleep for that, that crucial second and your Katusha or Rocket already is vulnerable. Uh, let's see, Raquette trying to counteract this T70 push. T70 doing a good job of harassing and pulling back before they can uh, get some shots back. Centiles are field not quite... For hmm? Nagano, sorry, Finally. Finally. Yeah, as you said. Kind of falls into the the Brit responsibility, I think, to get the centaur because it is just so effective against the uh, against the infantry. We have the Brimba from tier four. No surprises there. Like really, not surprised to see mm -hmm. tier four from us there. We've, we've talked a lot today about uh, how it's just such a no-brainer at the moment. Mm -hmm. These packs have been doing a great job of effectively shutting down the Cromwell. Promo has cut. Every time he's gotten repaired up to go re engage, he gets shot by two packs and has to pull back again. <laughs> so, good placement there for the packs and um, awareness. We're losing a capture point. Scotch has been doing a great job with these shocks. Every time, they're in the same spot, but every time he manages to surprise uh, CN with the positioning and uh, ambush some troops or some retreats. He's right next to a mine, though. I mean, yeah, you, you would think they actually had a stealth function the way that the engagements have been going. Because like, how on earth is uh, Seeking Guy... Sorry, it's creative name not not spotting them. But you're right, he's uh, not dealt with those efficiently at all. The Grim Bear is going to be the counter to this, surely, but it's a bit too far in the center of the map right now. Um, it's a nice flank here with the Grenadiers. They're trying to get rid of this Maxim. They're up against the centaur at the moment, but one of the squads has got to stay in for the uh, the wipe. They've got it. Two pack 40s in the center. One more shot needed here to get that centaur, but oh. it misses. And here we see the Katusha firing back. This was the problem with actually using the support weapons together like this. You've got to be so careful. Oh, T7 is pushing up to finish. Yep. Oh, if they can finish us off, that'll be a huge blow. Yeah, that's the problem with control grouping your AT guns, is that that happens. <laughs> yeah. Conscripts from Scotch, a great rush there. They sprinted past the uh, MG42 as it was setting up. And uh, we have coordinated barrage from Royal Artillery Regiment in the center, able to cause 
serious issues for the oh. Axis. They've got to get out of that area. Seriously, Puma is stunned. Lucky not to lose the infantry that were just casually running across the center there. If you get to blow up the pack in case anyone missed that. It got recruited, decrewed again, and then blown. Well, yeah, that artillery placement was... Couldn't have been better given how concentrated they were in the middle. Did you see that? Seeking just killed a crawler so it didn't get vision for the sniper anymore. I don't know if everyone, anyone else thought that. I think there was a crawling Tommy. <laughs> it spotted so, the sniper. Like, so many people don't pay attention to this feature of the game. Like, sometimes actually it's me included. Um, but yeah, of course, these crawling units giving recon. God knows how they're reporting that to headquarters. I'm bleeding out, but there's a sniper here. Yeah. Somebody kill him. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Quite the, the ammunition there, using a hole, however big that shell is, to kill some poor soul who's bleeding out. It's the kindest Anyways. thing to do. <laughs> yeah, mercy killing. Turn him into uh, Swiss cheese. Armor car ready for action. Oh, that's a uh, creative name, just caught laying mines in the center. I think, actually... Nagano doesn't. Oh, yeah, he does have minesweepers actually on one of his squads of sappers, so he should be fine. Uh, Scotch actually went for double flamethrowers, so it really falls into Nagano's hands to be oh, utilizing the sappers for the rushes. Look at this. Raquette missed its first shot in T70, and the retreat loop of death nearly caught it. It does catch it. <laughs> it gets wiped there. Where's the Zisk gun? There it is. Taking shots at the boom bar. Thankfully, this MG-34 was available to uh, pin down the conscripts and prevent the capture of their Ked, but he really needs to get some infantry up there. Can't just be losing your AT guns. Stupid barrage, going in for the Zis, I'm assuming. Still hasn't moved. IS-2 on the field as well. Might get revealed here by the rocket strike. I think it does, because it just clipped him. What a terrible time to lose a Pac-40 and a Oh doing? no! I mean, that's, do you think he could pick up a flamethrower? <laughs> I think he thought so, yeah, but I mean, when you've got the IS-2 there, which has already got, like, decent enough splash damage from the, the shells, you don't want to be making mistakes like that, and it's, like, pretty much just in negative cover over the riverbed. Uh, that's a, a big mistake. And right now, how are they going to deal with this? Uh, Seeking Guy is really far away from an elephant. So uh, he's going to have to maybe get something from tier 4 or creative name. He's going to have to uh, get a panther soon, but they're just not at that point yet. There's two yeah. pack 40s that we know of. Um, oh, um, he's going for a base caddy inspection. Oh, and he gets a again. <laughs> he's going to easily be able to recruit that, but it's just uh, throwing salt in the wound. Or we can crew just take it. Um, but uh Seeking actually rebuilt his pack, so I think he might not be going for that Panther route that you mentioned. I think he's just gonna double down and and just wait another hundred fuel for the elephant and hopefully not get obliterated by then. Oh by the pack forties so oh, overextended yeah. there. What was happening here? They've actually got vision from the Jaeger light infantry. That's a misclick, I'm a hundred percent sure of that. Incendiary barrage coming down now from Scotch. Uh, to actually just make a terrible retreat. They may even lose the veterans on that second pack gun if they don't get out of there in time. I think coordinated barrage is coming down as well from Nagano. I mean... You know what I have there is, I've done that before, is you attack move, like, somewhere, thinking you attack move, but you actually press the move. So he probably pressed attack move near the centaur, but mistakenly didn't press uh, Q or A, and actually moved his packs there, and they punished that so quickly. Puma here may be able to get the centaur. It's a great shot from centaur. the pack 40. We've got to get those units I out of there. Two, These, yeah. I mean, the game is all the about these small victories at the moment. The pack gun is ready for orders. Flares ready to illuminate the front line. He got itself stuck behind the shrub and he's taking six pounder shot. Fortunately, he went dark and forced an attack round. 
Stuka Barrage coming in, probably on the six pounder. Oh, was that Bet 3? Sure, they actually, but uh, that no, was Bet 2. This is the, uh, this is the Cromwell that's just going for the bomber. It's a beautiful shot through the front. There is a Comet, by the way, coming in as well. So what you're looking at oh, at the moment is the no. IS-2 charging Duka. in. IS-2, Comet, Duka. and Cromwell. I don't know how they're going to be able to manage this at all. Boomer there is actually struggling to deal with the uh, Cromwell. That is a beautiful uh, Pack 40 shot to try and help here. And they're just trying to get the Pack 40s back to base at the moment, or at least they can recruit them a bit safer. They lost the T70 in that. A lot of blows. They lost the T70 on the right side to the Rakettens. In case you didn't catch that. Rakettens moving up to the side, hopefully trying to pick up some hits. Caddy's trying to clean up the pack. Packs, I should say. Nagano and Scott are doing a great job at taking advantage of these mistakes. These AT guns, positioning. They're really showing how well they uh, play together. Those angles of attack. And look at that creative name actually forced to get a Yag Panzer. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good choice on this map, so maybe he was thinking about getting Panther instead, but. Oh, yeah, this, they need this something thing now. They, they yeah, cannot just... lose. Um, they cannot be losing territory and units like that. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, this losing the Stuka is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Wireless intercept. They still have 300 points remaining. Well, uh, there's a snare on the Comet there. Actually, the Puma's the one to go up and deal with it. I guess the uh, Yak Panzer 4 is just going to have to. Trying to crush. He's trying to crush with the Yak Panzer. <laughs> Puma's kiting and shooting and running. Comet, ready to move out. It's funny, you know, when you look at the uh, Axis, I mean, they're heavily vetted, uh, vetted at the moment. You're looking at like Vet 4, 5, uh, 3 for the Oster on nearly everything, yet they're still struggling to actually make any movement. And uh, just some mistakes like this, actually, you constantly see these eight. These uh, AT guns just walking into the shock troopers. There's our Again. elephant. Oh, thank God for that. Again. They're so delighted to see this unit hit the field. It's probably a huge morale boost for Volks and Grens being shredded. The thing is, they, as you said, the infantry is going to be a problem because. Although the LMG Grens are going to have a great time on crossing, these Volks are not meant to to be your only infantry for the entirety of the game. Okay, there's Elephant saying hello to the IS-2. Yeah, that's actually car. a really uh, good thing for the Axis right now. Uh, Creative Name and Seeking Guy have actually been banking up some munitions resources. They're going to have... Uh, uh, they're going to have J-87 dive bombs plus the Sector Assault from Overwatch Doctrine. So they're going to be uh, in a position where they can move up the map. This is a great counter snipe there from the Zis Barrage. Trying its best. Oh, the the Katusha, Katusha lands on top as well. The sniper gets out just in time. We are losing territory. I don't know what Seeking is doing with these packs every single time. He's going out and spotting with them. There's nothing screening it, and he's lost two pack 40s this way. He's lucky him not to lost a third right there to these Tommies. Luckily for him, there's a shrub here. He's trying to smoke them off while blocking them at the same time. <laughs> Enemy forces are attempting it's to this uh, tactical the... control group of Tommies has done a good job at exposing how weak this flank is, and look at that. This MG42 is getting super focused. Just a really significant lack of spotting uh, for Axis players. Um, you know, it's like they have enough room to play. There's a big bunch of uh, grenadiers here outside the base. I'm just thinking, are we going to see some kind of off map come in? Where is the elephant in all of this? Elephant's moving up through the middle. Towards the right side with the JP4 with the JU87 Overwatch strafe. T34 built there probably for the only purpose of ramming the elephant. <laughs> no, 
Nice. T-34 goes down to some rack assassin. And the comet and uh, double comet now has fully retreated the base. So many planes, you know. <laughs> the center obviously died, so it's that's a real problem for them right now. The elephant, by the way, getting some uh, big oh, shots in, just though. forcing that uh, ISU, uh, sorry, IS2 back to base. Not sure why he's not sweeping for his elephant, especially when he's crossing this side. He's really lucky there's no mine there. Hitting a mine here against IS2, double comet, and AT guns would be surely a dead elephant. But he's playing pretty greedily. How did the sniper Getting go down, rewarded. by the way? I missed it. Must have been the Tommies hitting it on retreat from that caddy barrage. I was looking for his model, but I couldn't find it. I got buried somewhere in those craters. There is another incendiary barrage on the MG42. Nice little soft retreat. They really need to get some VPs under their control before they drop below their uh, opponent. Just it seems like a real lack of strategy from the Axis side in the last 10 minutes. They've just been exposed. Their lack of spotting not having the right support for their support guns. Like, look at these packs again. They're just with a single gren. Yeah, it All it takes suck. is that blob to pop up again. Even the double comet is enough to bully them away. I mean, they've had to deal with a lot in terms of, like, indirect fire and... You know, and yeah, and they lost their own. They lost what, sorry? They, and they lost their own art indirect fire. The Stuka got wiped and they haven't chosen to rebuild it. He's actually going for a Panzer IV instead. There's the <laughs> comments. Oh, still look at this. No sweeping. This is what happens. Yeah. You're in the grand final of a 2v2 tournament and you're not sweeping. <laughs> you're playing against two factions that can spam mines like nonstop. You have to sweep. Yeah, it is tough. I mean, I, given the fact that. There isn't really, really much cohesion between them at the moment. I mean, they're still kind of holding this off, <laughs> and it's uh, it's pretty cool that they're That's managing just how to survive this. Way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Elephant's so menacing that you have to be really careful where you push, because even though they're playing better than they are, all it takes is one good focus fire to knock out a heavy tank in the common or IS2. Because there's four AT guns, so they have to really pick and choose. <laughs> the AT gun Looks like the Zist is one. creeping up to the edge. Get a hit in. That's it. Panzer IV taking an engagement. It's not gonna win. Backing up. It's an interesting one to watch when you've got the elephant and the Hetzer here, and they're all in the center. The IS-2 is actually surprisingly able to still come onto the side of the map. Um, and, you know, like, uh, engage infantry units. It's relatively uncontested. Do you see what Scotch is doing? He keeps uh, popping at the edge of the Panzer IV's firing range, taking a shot at it and backing up immediately, and the Panzer IV can't even return fire, and he's knocked him down to half health doing that. Really solid play, something you may not notice if you don't look at it. Just throwing that out there for everyone. Elephant getting focused down by the Zis gun. You know, he needs to be really careful. He's lucky that he has that recon going up right now to spot the comets. Packs are moving actually to prevent that push. With again, nothing screening for it, nothing spotting for it. Stacking up. I mean, I get the feeling Panzer if, uh, if they decide to just group up on the right-hand side and play from the right to the middle, uh, they'll probably be in a really good position with this, this uh, composition as they are right now. Um, let's not count out, they are building up the resources again. If they get Sector Assault, I think they could make a pretty decent push here. Uh, these kind of abilities are devastating, so as long as they don't get those squad wipes, as long as they keep hold of everything, uh, they're still mm -hmm. in with a chance, but Axis, you heard they... Game one dropping below 100 VPs. 
Oh, here comes the shotgun Panzer Warfare. Shock troops aren't reacting. Might get wiped. Oh, very close. So close. Those shock troops are have been so effective. Answer four popping up here. Still nothing sweeping for it. Gonna take two hits there. For JP4 popping up as well. Gonna take some shots of the IS2. Comments are rotating to assist. Elephant moving into a blob of infantry with uh, enough health down to get snared. Looks like the comms are gonna do just that. I mean, they're just desperate at this point. They have to do. They have to try something. They've been triple capped for the last five or so minutes and need to is, do uh, something. Where is concentrated barrage coming down right now? Is that on the right, on the side? right side. Yep. All right, well, here come the Comets. They've uh, got vision from the Tommies in there. Two of them. I mean, this is enough to take down the Eggpanzer IV from the front. You can see them just speeding back into base. Great from the uh, Allies to push Axis this far back. The elephant is also struggling Stone in the piles. center. There's constant vision supplied from uh, down, the, the sappers. Oh, stunt pioneers go down. Absolutely need that unit to be repairing. It had the support package as well. By the time their tanks are repaired, the game's over. <laughs> there isn't enough time. They don't have anything but the left side. Oh. Such a huge contrast for pushes. Allies have had mines to stop them, while the Axis have been so focused on banking up for their clicking abilities, they haven't put a single mine on their retreat paths or in the entrances to their base. Could you imagine if there was a teller right there for those comments? Yeah, it'd definitely be a, a different game with so much anti tank. But anti tank, you know, with this range, it just needs to have. Uh, it needs to have the vision. When you think about how far the elephant can fire, um, I mean, it just hasn't been able to get any shots off at, at max range. And even yeah. with the recon, you know, even with that recon plane, which they're kind of uh, spamming at the moment, it hasn't worked out. Nagano and Scotch are doing a great job working together here and most uh, most important of all I've been taking advantage of every mistake that uh, the Axis have been making and just dishing out the damage I mean this is historically and they have an elephant for God's sake and they're getting pushed back so so easily JP4 nearly goes down so much the uh, overwatch sector assault coming in it's not enough to deal with any of these tanks it's ambitious and the kinds of four is chasing but uh need some infantry now to go and capture the vp there's 27 remaining and uh access just if you actually look at how much uh creative name and seeking guy have between them in terms of capturing i think you realize that they're not going to be able to do anything on the map right now they they surrender i think that's yep. a good decision at this point uh but sure. gg game one uh very very confidently a win for nagano and scotch gg